Let's take a closer look at the Vintage Collection 501st Legion Clone Trooper figure. Villa Veracino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there, and welcome back to the Villa Veracino YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the Hasbro Vintage Collection VC240 figure Clone Trooper 501st Legion. This one is an addition from the Clone Wars line. This one is not the one as we see them in Revenge of the Sith. Of course, that iconic scene where Lord Vader is launching an attack on the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, that is where we first see them. But of course, Order 66 is such a pivotal moment in the Star Wars storytelling line that of course they do appear in other uh, episodes and series. Of course we saw some flashback scenes in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series um, and it is such an iconic scene with all of those blue and white troopers behind Lord Vader. So of course this one is going to be very popular for people that want to army build, uh, especially to, if you want to create that scene on your shelf. This version of course is from the Clone Wars as we can see here and we have imagery from the Clone Wars here on the side. So before I take a closer look at the figure itself I'm just going to take a look at the packaging. Pretty standard for a vintage collection. I like that we've been many years with a very standardized card back design. So if you like to keep them carded, they look great all displayed. We have the bright red Clone Wars logo there. Then we have, of course, a matching blue nameplate, Clone Trooper 501st Legion. We have the card art there, as seen in the animated series. And we have the figure here, uh, in its plastic bubble stored there with two blaster weapons. On the back we can see VC240, nice standardized number system, and we can see the other figures from this wave, the Fortuna, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, Yoda, Quill, Fennec Shand, Death Watch Mandalorian, and the 501st Legion clone trooper there. So an interesting mix, um, but of course a popular one. We were so happy to be able to find this one on store shelves because clone troopers and stormtroopers, because of their army building nature, generally do uh, fly off the shelves here locally in New Zealand. Uh, we're very happy to be able to add this one to our collection. So that is the carded figure. And we have a second one, so we've been able to take this one off its backing card. We like to cut the bubble so that we can uh, retain the backing card for our collection. So we can take a closer look at the figure loose. So it's pretty hard to do a very cool 501st Legion scene with Lord Vader with just one clone trooper behind him. So we got two. So kept one carded so we could see it in its carded form and this one here we opened already uh, to just take a closer look at the figure. So for now we have the two figures to stand sort of flanking Anakin for our display. Of course we would love to be able to do a huge big uh, collection there but we, we don't get too far into army building. Uh, we know that other collectors in New Zealand do really want to get their hands on this figure as well. So in the future we might look at picking some up from eBay to fill in our squad of 501st Legion. Of course the name 501st Legion, as some fans may be aware, was originally started as a fan costuming group in the 90s um, and the sort of the unofficial name of the costuming club is sort of the 501st Legion, also known as Vader's Fist um, because you know it was predominantly stormtroopers when it started um, as a imperial sort of bad guy costuming group. When episode three came out, uh, the filmmakers decided to sort of put a nod to the costuming group and call Anakin's uh, clone troopers in that scene, the 501st Legion. So it basically sort of introduced the concept because of course Anakin is Lord Vader at that point. They are essentially Vader's fist when they are attacking the Jedi Temple. So that's sort of a fun nod. Um, my husband and I have been 501st members for many years. He has been in the club for more than 20 years. So we are particularly fond of the 501st Legion and their appearance on screen in the Star Wars universe. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the figure. So one of the things that I know I sort of noticed first off is that this is a helmeted figure. You can just see 
the chin in there. So that's always a little bit of a mixed bag when it comes to collectors because uh, the nature of putting a plastic helmet over a head, uh, you either end up with kind of a small head so that the helmet is the correct size to be able to fit over it or you end up with a normal sized head and a slightly bigger helmet. Um, but I do really appreciate the head sculpt of this figure. I think it is a pretty good likeness to Timur Morrison, obviously playing the adult clones of Django Fett in the film. Um, he's been, you know, obviously the face of the clone troopers for many years now. And I think this is particularly one of the better likenesses of him in uh, action figure form. It's pretty hard to get good likenesses in this scale, but I think they've done a pretty good job. Um, and he has, you know, full range of motion with the head there. Just gonna put the helmet down. We'll have a look at some of the other ranges of motion. We've got the sort of classic um, joins at the shoulders, elbows, wrists. This hand has a trigger finger pose here. So of course for holding his blaster, uh, same again on the other hand. Uh, same joints, good range of motion for sort of holding blasters. He has articulation at the upper torso. Uh, I can't get much movement at the waist. I don't know if it actually, it kind of doesn't know. So not at the belt, but at that upper torso um, position there. Then we've got Good range of motion in the legs. The knees on this one are a little bit stiff, which I don't mind. Uh, obviously knees are one of those ones where they get a bit bendy, they can get quite uh, uh, lopsided on the shelf and nice tight ankles on this one as well. So he stands pretty straight. I do like that in a clone trooper figure um, so that you can, if you want to do like a big lineup of them, you can get them looking all straight and uh, proper sort of in their poses. So we've got the classic blue withered marking on this one. Not much in the way of a paint scheme on the back, just white and black. Little bit of that sort of beige brown for the sole of the boots. And we've got some blue striping down the legs there. Um, yeah, but I, I do like that face. You can't see that uh, in the packaging. Um, and obviously you wouldn't be able to tell until you open the figure up and take the helmet off to see how good that paint job is, um, or whether you've got a floor or anything like that. But I think um, looking at that, I think that's pretty good. So let's take a closer look at the helmet itself, of course. Um, pretty, pretty standard clone trooper with the blue marking. Got some very tiny, tiny little blue stripes. I'm not even sure the camera can focus on that small detail there. Um, got gray and black stripes here, some black detailing on the back. Overall, it is a pretty good little helmet um, and it fits on pretty well. It's not it's not too much of a push to get that on and off and I can, let's see, I can wiggle it on and off. Obviously, um, if you want to sort of preserve the paint, taking it on and off might leave a little bit of a, a scratch at some point. Looking at the, um, the base of the neck, it looks like the head is actually sculpted in the plastic skin tone. So you won't necessarily scratch the face, but the hair I think might become a little worn with time if you do take them on and off. So of course, um, as I mentioned about the sort of perspective of the helmet, this one seems to have a well sort of proportioned head, which means that just the nature of the scale and the thickness of plastic here means that the helmet is just a little bit uh, large when worn uh, on an overall scale. I have a older uh, sort of episode 3 era clone trooper. He's a little bit yellowed uh, with age. Um, and as you can see, the helmet is just a little bit a little bit smaller on the one. This is just a full helmet. There isn't a head underneath. It is just an attachment there. And you can kind of see the scale there a little bit. I'm trying to get them shoulder to shoulder. This one just looks a little bit more right and this one looks a little bit more uh, larger in that helmet scale compared to the rest of the armor um, but it's a little bit of sort of a trade-off with that sort of extra play feature um, with the helmet there if you want to not that we ever see the um the clone troopers the 501st legion clone troopers specifically take their helmets off um but we do, you know, we know what they look like underneath. So we've got that there if we want it. Um, the other thing is that we have 
two weapons here. We have a classic tiny little rifle there and we have the longer uh, rifle there. So he has a trigger finger on both hands which is good if you want to pose this gun in either hand he will hold it nicely. Now if you grab a figure like this he is holding the long rifle um, and if I take the base off you can kind of see he's got his trigger finger here and then he's got a gripped hand here for holding onto that underside. It isn't in a pointing uh, finger. So this one his hand is not really going to be able to hold this one in the same way. His finger is kind of pointing out a little bit. It's not quite the same grip. It's a little bit awkward. Um, and I'll see if I can get him to hold it to uh, show it as an example. The fingers on these figures are always just a little bit fiddly to pose. Um, let's see if I can get this one. His thumb kind of wants to get in the way. Um, you can see how I'm sort of struggling to do this. Um, he might be able to hold it. Let's see, his fingers are really tight. I don't know if I can actually get that in there without scratching the paint. Um, yeah, so you kind of have to, like he holds onto that well, but because of the tight, um, I'm not even sure I can show it there, because of that tight uh, hold, hold there, he doesn't, I'm going to risk sort of, um, he kind of holds it like that. It's kind of, you know, hovering above his hand. If I really want to permanently hold it there, I could probably push it in there and just not worry about it too much. But I'm worried that I'm going to like bend his thumb back a little bit. Um, and I'm probably going to display him with the smaller one, um, which kind of clips into his hand well enough. Um, and his finger goes in that trigger spot nicely there but then his other hand is just a little bit awkward so if I get his hand going the right way it kind of it sits there sort of pointing a little bit um, if we try and sort of pose him it's not really gonna not really gonna work well sorry I've twisted his arm around a bit too much there <laughs> trying to get those poses right there so it it's a little bit more awkward um, and this figure in particular just just as I'm holding that I'm noticing there's just sort of like that little bit of extra paint spillover on the finger um, which is always hard to see um, when your figures are packaged and it's a little bit when it comes to clone troopers you don't really have too much option uh, if you see them on a store shelf you kind of have to grab them um, because if you go back the next day they'll be gone somebody else will have grabbed them for their army building so it's a little bit of a shame about that paint spill on the finger but all in all it's pretty well done um, a little bit of blue on the back just a tiny little dot there you can see the tiny little details there on the thermal detonator on the back the detailing on the backpack but overall a pretty good figure kind of wish his hands were just a little bit better for posing um, but yeah I'm really happy to be able to add two 501st Legion clone troopers to our collection even though technically they are from the Clone Wars uh, I'm never mad to see clone troopers uh, on store shelves these days back in the sort of re episode 3 prequel era they were just dozens and dozens of clones it felt like that was the only figure we were ever getting at that point in time and it was a little bit of a almost a burnout trying to collect out all of the different variations the color schemes and things like that but now it seems like they're kind of rare on the ground and I'm glad to see Hasbro coming back and giving us these especially with their appearance in some of the modern series uh, we even see a little bit in the Mandalorian and of course in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series so they are very uh, sort of sought after at this point in time because of those recent appearances so if you want to uh, build up those scenes uh, then you're going to need a bunch of these guys so let me know in the comments down below what you think of this figure is it is it a win for you are you going to army build this one or do those things like the hand and the helmet size uh, make it a little bit of a miss for you I'm not too picky with the helmet I, I kind of like the fact that I can take it off even though I'm probably not going to pose it like that on my display shelf 
Um, but I think the scale's not too bad for it, really. I understand there have certainly been worse bubble heads <laughs> uh, in the past. I think it's not too bad, especially um, from an animated series. Um, I think there is also a, a slight element of stylization from the animated series, but I think he's cool. I always want more 501st Legion clone troopers for my shelf. One day I'll have that big scene of a Lord Vader um, with a just a whole lot of these guys behind him. But for now, very happy to have found him locally um, and that we were able to get to. So we've got a mini squad here at least. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out our channel for more Star Wars unboxing videos, uh, we'd love for you to subscribe and follow along our Star Wars adventures. So thank you so much for watching. We'll have more close-up photos of this figure available on our blog to show those tiny details that don't show up very well on video. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next one. And, and as always, may the Force be with you. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, check out our other videos, and subscribe for alerts about new uploads. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.